So what about this presentation? This morning keynotes we heard about uh, hybrid paradigm sometimes, um, about WebKit. And so what I'm trying to do in this presentation is how to present how an operator can leverage this technology basically to address the fragmentation. So just a few words about uh, me and my group. So I come, as said by Tom, uh, from Telecom Italia, the strategy innovation team, and basically on a group called NSET and Embedded Research and Technology. So basically we do innovation on, on the NSET platform. Um, my group has a big expertise on embedded Linux, Symbian, other operating systems, and we have a long history of, let's say, we are the QT lovers since many years ago. We said, just to, for Tom pleasure, we said that we, um, being Qtopia licensee uh, many years ago, and so probably we saw before Nokia the uh, possibility of Qt on mobile phones. And um, just in scope of this presentation, we are also among the different activity of innovation active in many mobile web initiatives. And there are Bondi, WAC, W3C, and webinars. I don't know how many of you know about this initiative, but I'm going to say something because it's really in scope of this presentation. So what this presentation is about, basically we would like to demonstrate that using web technology and Qt can bring amazing application primarily on mobile phones, but then also on PC, connected TV, and car. So this is the, the scope of this presentation. So which are the uh, technology, the Qt technology we are talking about? For sure, Qt WebKit, um, Qt Mobility and Mobility Extension, and of course, in relation to that, about Series 60, 5th edition, and Symbian in general, and of course, Migo. So, I'm pretty sure that most of you knows about all this technology. Um, we have as said, said already uh, the great importance of Qt WebKit at the moment because many services are connected to it so as to download a lot of content for the network. But as you will see in this presentation, Qt WebKit can be used even to have um, offline application on a mobile phone. So this is probably the most interesting part of this presentation. So let's see, let's see what is the project we are talking about. So the project was an R&D project started in early 2009 uh, in the R&D of Telecom Italia and has a usual aim from a mobile operator point of view, or from a service provider's point of view. For sure, we would like to uh, reduce the cost, the NRE cost, for mobile application development, so cost per application should be reduced. If we have 10 applications, we, we would like to have the 11th, the cost should not be uh, doubled, let me say. The other dimension is that we want to reduce the NRE cost for supporting another platform. So if we want to move to another operating system and another, an application, we cannot you know, redo everything by scratch. So this is, of course, another aim. Another important one was also reduced barrier and cost due to the developer learning curve. All of us knows that it's quite difficult to know a new way to learn a new platform. And luckily for our user, we have tons of operating systems. And each time make a, a group to know a new platform is really, really a mess for, for our point of view. As operator, you know that we have to support the majority of the operating systems. So we cannot do a choice. We support only this one and not this other one because it, that's up to our customer to decide. And the last one, we would like to have an homogeneous user experience across all the devices. And this is even trickier uh, objective. So which is the problem? Already said, the phone is starting to be a real complete IT platform, uh, more powerful than PC few years ago, we have one giga processor, something like one gig um, uh, memory sites, big screen. So it's really a, a PC now, let me say. And, but um, respect to the PC world, we have a proliferation of operating system. I'm not sure to have mentioned all of them, but as you may understand, this is the difficulties, the big fragmentation in the operating systems arena. 
And of course, we have also uh, a big variety, probably bigger variety of storefronts to deliver all the different applications on the different phones with different strategy and so on. This is the problem that us as operators, our developers as well, are faced, and we would like to try to address or at least mitigate. As I said, fragmentation on a side is a value for the service provider point of view, for the application developing point of view, sometimes is a difficulty. So let's have a look when, uh, in general, an operator, but in general, a service provider would like to develop or to provide a service on a mobile phone. Basically, we move on a two-dimension uh, area. We could try to go through an higher market penetration, or we would like to have really rich application and have a big access to the device technology. Now, of course, if we want to address the whole portfolio, the only way to do is to use the, let me say, traditional, oops, sorry, traditional GSM technology, so SMS or IVR services, but of course the richness is really, really low. At the opposite, we can use vertical technology, so going natively with the technology chosen by the OEM for, for a certain phone, but then we need to do different vertical clients for all the operating systems. The interesting part, of course, for an operator point of view is in the middle, where we have the traditional cross-technology like Java, Flash, we can add more, that sometimes have, um, as you know, fragmentation problem as well. And instead, in this presentation, we are looking at the web technology as a way to have a good market penetration and good richness. Now, we are not satisfied at the moment let me say, with the richness of web technology. Because through a web browser we can do something, but we cannot do something else. So we need to move a bit this web technology towards the right of the slides. You know. So just to see the status of web technology mobile, browser technology is spreading on mobile phones. We have a full internet access to the majority of mobile phones. We have HTML5 that is coming. So really powerful. Many browsers are already um, supporting part of the HTML5 stack. Interestingly, the JavaScript engine are faster and faster, so you can do really application on a mobile page. And as said, there is an extensive availability of knowledge through the industry. In other words, if I have to hire a guy knowing even Qt is difficult, but if I have to have one guy and I need just to make a web page, it's quite easy to find out that kind of knowledge. This is the reality. So browser is a great technology, but what we want also for, uh, let me say, a modern point of view, we would like to, to have uh, resident applications, so not just browser pages. Here arrived the concept of widget. So basically the idea was, let's see on the browser model. On the browser model we have, we click on a link, all the resources of a page means HTML, CSS, images, JavaScript file, are downloaded in that moment, apart, let me say, the caching uh, capability that we may have. But in principle, the model, we click, we download some resources. After a certain latency, especially on the mobile network, we are going to, uh, to see that resources on the browser. The browser interpret the HTML, the JavaScript, and so on. And then through Ajax, the applications start to communicate with the network. What was the idea instead? I said, the objective is to have resident application on a mobile phone, even offline applications. So what, what basically was the idea? To put all the resources in a zip file called WGT, Install just once on the phone, and the browser, instead of connecting to the network to download all the resources each time, read locally the different resources. So the HTML page after the installation is resident on the mobile phone. This is the concept of widget. So what happens is that the user downloads a widget eventually from a store, install the widget, and then when you want to use the application, just click on the widget 
the browser is opened, read the local resources, and just started to talk without, let me say, last latency through Ajax to the, the network appliance. This is something that is not so new in the sense that there is already a standardization effort, especially in W3C, to define this kind of widget. So basically, it's a way to do application using web technology. So let's do an example. So I want to do uh, a simple application, finding restaurants. It's the usual, <laughs> let me say, look, look and, and search application. So I open my widget. I said the widget was installed. So the resources are all there. We open the restaurant widget. So the browser is opened. The, the web runtime starts to read the HTML5. No connection at the moment. We would like to get the location. Then through Ajax, we would like to search for different restaurants in that location area. We want to make then to select a restaurant, to make a call to the restaurant, eventually send SMS to the friends, save the address and number of, of the restaurant in my agenda, and eventually navigate to the, uh, to the uh, restaurant. Now, what is missing on the browser? What is missing on the browser are the device API. As we know, basically, the browser is a sandbox and have no access to the device API. What is going now uh, instead in the browser technology arena is that people are starting to add to JavaScript new API to access all the device capability. Just to mention some, get the location. There are many browsers already enabled with a JavaScript API um, that provide the location of the phone or the PC and so on. We may need the call, so have some API to, put, to make a phone call, uh, to send SMS, to have access to the uh, PIM, uh, and so on. So this is the innovation that we need to do, adding device API to, to a browser. So basically, as I said, what we are doing, we are trying to move the web technology uh, on this graph more towards the richness area of the application. With HTML5, we can say uh, that we can arrive to the richness of the native application sooner or later. But it's not enough. Why? Because, of course, there are some security aspects that need to be you know, addressed. So there is a reason why the browser is a sandbox, for security reason. So for instance, for the location uh, in relation to privacy, not all the widget, not all the application uh, have to be allowed to get the location. The same applies to the call, to the SMS, to the PIM, and so on. So what I need is a system to give some policy to the browser, to the web runtime, to make some application selectively uh, allowed to access device API and some other not. Based, for instance, on a certification, the widget can be certified uh, based on, I don't know, the owner of the widget, based on some environment. I don't know. If I'm roaming, I cannot do the phone call, or I, at least I have to prompt the user and things like that. And this policy has to be flexible because, because of course, in different countries we can have different regulatory uh, framework, for instance. In some countries, the location can be you know, used. In some other, you have to prompt the user and things like that. So we need, at the end, not just the device API, but the, some device API with some policy to decide if the application is allowed or not to use that device API. This is something that is under, that is under standardization in W3C, was standardized by an initiative called Bondi, and now was adopted by WAC. I don't know how many of you know about this initiative. However, it is an operator-driven initiative to constitute a wholesale app store, so giving the mean to develop, uh, to develop application and uh, distribute this application on the different storefront of the operators. And WAC, exactly for mitigated fragmentation, is adopting this kind of technology. Basically, web technology extended with device API through some security mean. So this is the architecture, for instance, from Bondi, but as I said, WAC is doing more or less the same, in which we have the widget package, 
that is interpreted by a certain web runtime. The web runtime is a, has some JavaScript extension that through a secure access can access to different API. I make a list, accelerometers, orientation, location, uh, PIM, phone status, file system, multimedia, and so on. So different API to cover the different capability of the phone. Now, we did a lot, and uh, you are wondering what we do with Qt. So, so our idea was to develop exactly this architecture using Qt. And let's see why. I mean, of course, Qt is, first of all, a great place where to develop. So this is the first one. The second one is the great knowledge of Qt guys around web runtime technology. They are driving somehow also WebKit. And they did a great thing. They integrated a in, uh, Qt widget called Q WebView that basically is uh, an embedded WebKit browser that can be embedded in your Qt application. But they did more. Uh, they make us, they give, gave us all the mean to interact with this um, uh, object, and we can mix so HTML, CSS, JavaScript with native Qt uh, code. So basically, we have a mean to interact. Let's see if I found okay to interact from WebKit to the native code, and from the native code to WebKit. The interesting part of WebKit, the Qt WebKit, is that there is, they have a lot of great capability. It's already HTML5 enabled somehow. Uh, it has um, um, all the possibility to use CSS-based transformation. He has possibility to go CSS-based animation, zooming, and the most interesting one has a really fast JavaScript engine. So that's why we choose an, uh, Qt to develop that kind of architecture. So what we did, um, basically we developed the widget engine that we will see is in charge to install and to manage the widget. Of course, when I talk about widget, I talk about web widget. As we saw, it is basically a package of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript zipped. So I'm talking about web widget. We developed the security manager, and we developed the device API implementation. In the first release, these device implementation are aligned to the Bondi definition of the device implementation. So how to do an application at the end? After we have developed the widget engine, the security manager, and the device API implementation, we need just to develop some new widget to do a new application. So we use HTML to do the structure of the application, the layout, base interactivity. We use the CSS to do basically the look and feel of the application, very simply. And we use JavaScript for the real logic of the application. So basically, to do a new service, you have just to develop with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Of course, then, the connection with the server are done through usual Ajax. So to do that, basically, I need of course, a team that has to develop the widget engine, security manager, and device API. But to develop a new application, I need just expertise in the web area. So I can use a guy, for instance, the guy that developed my intranet. I can get these guys and develop a mobile application in a few days. And believe me, we tried even with students. And if you have to teach to students how to develop natively on a phone, you need at least a couple of months with this technology, a couple of weeks. So it's really impressive, this. And you do not, of course, uh, have you know, a reduced number of capability. Because if you need some more capability, for instance, you need a really strong algorithm. It cannot be done in JavaScript. You just add a new device API using Qt, and you just call that device API in JavaScript. And you continue to use all the features of Qt. If you have to, I don't know, uh, perform an XML transformation or things like that, you can do in Qt, new device API, and exposing to the other guys that are developing and concentrated to the real service. 
Now, just going a bit in detail, um, we have used QWebView, that is, as I said, a component embedded the, the WebKit. There is a widget handler. It's possible to manage multiple widgets, so we can instantiate different QWebView components. And then, of course, there is a match with the different device API that we would like to develop. Of course, we try to use, as possible, the Qt mobility part. As you have noticed, the different messaging, calendar, contact are not, let me say, standard Qt API. You need the, the new package that is the Qt mobility. We will see that we hadn't managed to do all the API for Qt mobility, so we are looking for new roadmap of Qt to cover the whole stack of uh, device capability. Just to give more insight, the key API is a API called Add to JavaScript Window Object that enables you to extend the JavaScript that the QWeb view can handle. So basically, you add new functionality. Just another insight, basically what we do, for instance, in Bondi there is a file system API that is not usually in a browser. So you can read or write from a file, a local file. Uh, so what we did is to implement natively the write data, read data, and these are, are binded to Bondi interface reader write in JavaScript. So one functionality is in JavaScript, one native application, and there is a bind between the two. Just to go more inside the code, I don't know how much you can see of this code, but just to say that basically if you want to, to, to call a Bondi FPI called get default location that give you a default location like, I don't know, document files, things like that. So what we need is to have a simple Qt implementation, some JavaScript code to adapt from the pattern of the native implementation to the, the pattern defined in Bondi, and then you can call simply from JavaScript this API and of course, all the API are done in this in this way. Then, a uh, little insight on the security manager. So, the security manager, as I said, has to check when a widget call a certain API if that API is allowed or not. And of course, this is written in a file, in a policy file that is defined in Bondi as well. That is an XML file. So we developed security manager following a standard model for policy that is called Xanimal, that is quite a really tricky <laughs> and difficult model to, to get, but I try to be simple to say that basically there are two uh, main components, one called policy enforcement point, so where the real policy is enforced, and another called policy decision point. So when an API is called from the widget, the policy enforcement point, that is the web runtime at the end, has to the policy decision point if that widget is allowed or not to access that API. No, this is, so as we will see at the end, Nokia is an open source project, uh, more Omigo, this was developed on Symbian. Um, the problem was, but you did a great, a great question because we are thinking to join the projects. So this is an internal project, was not yet an open source project and was started before Nokia show up. But we will see later that I'm going to mention that kind of project for web runtime for sure. Yeah, so, so the um, difference is that basically our device API are different. So that one are the Nokia device API. And instead we need it to implement the standard Bondi one. And the second one is the security manager that is different. So we needed a flexible security manager uh, in order to uh, let me say, give different policy respect to different use cases. Just to give an example, we need some policy for consumer, some policy for business, some policy for the enterprise, uh, or some policy for different regulatory uh, frameworks. 
So these are the two main, but the technology are, I think was more or less the same. The other one, I'm not sure that they use the Qt WebKit on that phone. Not sure. Yeah. But however, I think it's 360 uh, WebKit. But however, the important point is that also Nokia is embracing these technologies and they have created an open source project that is already available, I mean, a couple of months. So that, that, that is a, a great news, I think. Yeah, at the moment it's uh, in, an internal project and we will see later where we are trying to, you know, converge with other people. One is the, the Nokia open source project for web runtime and there is another that is an European project called uh, Webinos, which we are trying to put together a community to extend this concept of you know extended JavaScript API to cover, let me say, the old possibility or the old need from a developer point of view. So just recapping which are the technology that we have used, Qt WebKit for the web view of course Qt 4.6 and the Qt Mobility. As I said before, unfortunately we had still to develop some API using the native uh, Serix API and we are waiting for having a full Qt Mobility API set to cover all the uh, API that we needed. But at the moment we still need some glue code. So, so now the you are wondering probably, okay, but Qt is already a cross-platform technology. Why you have to use web technology to have cross-platform development? So I tried to explain the reasons. So we started from a situation in which we had to, to do a custom code for each platform. So vertical silos for each operating system. So the first idea was, okay, let's try to reduce the code that we need to, to write for each platform. So we do a widget engine. Then we use web technology to do a widget. Of course, we still need some adaptation because as all the people that did at least one web page, you know that not all the web runtime behaves in the same way. So we need still to have some adaptation in the JavaScript code in the HTML and CSS. That was just already a better, a better situation. But of course, what uh, we get in mind is, okay, why not to use Qt for the platform covered by Qt? Our problem are, all, are still these widget engines that are not covered by Qt. So there are some operating systems that are not, unfortunately, covered by Qt. So we still have this fragmentation problem. So unfortunately, Qt do not solve all our fragmentation problem as an operator point of view. So we think that let's say, mitigating the fragmentation doing a Qt-based widget engine for the operating system covered by Qt is a first step, and the, all the web technology can cover the rest of the fragmentation. And this way, we are doing better. So which are the advantage? Reduce custom code per platform. Uh, reduce cost of adaptation web code, because most interestingly, the use of Qt-based uh, Qt widget engine make us also to remove all the adaptation that we need to do before because we really use the same web runtime, same code, same behavior on all the platform. It was not the same as before that we had even using web technology to do some JavaScript HTML adaptation. Using Qt, instead we had the real same behavior of the browser, of the, the cool web view on all the platforms. Now, how we are using this widget engine? So we are using in two, basically in two way, what we called container and what we called widget catalog. So in the container case, basically we develop the widget, we surround the widget with the widget engine, and we present as a usual application. So the application is uh, following the OS native application cycle. So from the storefront point of view, from the user point of view, it's a, a normal native application, but it's partially 
done using web technology. The other case is the widget catalog that is more classical one. We saw the widget engine, the widget engine is connected to a widget store or catalog as you want. The widget engine presents all the different widgets and the user can download a certain widget uh, to, to his own phone, so the life cycle is inside the application catalog, our own. So our two, two models using exactly the same code. Another step, so the fragmentation is not just on um, um, operating si mobile operating system, but also we have to support different kind of uh, terminals, not just mobile terminals. And Qt is great also for, for, this, um, for this fact, so we can move the same code from the mobile phone to the PC connected TV and cards, always using the widget paradigm. In this case, of course, we still need some adaptation for the form factor. Because of course, an application, which you know, the, this kind of screen can go on this one or to the 42-inch uh, TV that I have at home. Uh, but this is interesting because you know the, the Qt is used in different kind of industry, so we can use the same code and the same web technology on all the different. Um, uh, and this is something that we are doing. So we started from the mobile phone, and now we are migrating to the PC and then to the connected TV and cars. Now, concluding, uh, I say some words about the initiative that are relevant for this kind of presentation. I said WAC is one. Uh, WAC adopted enriched widget engine technology. So probably this project at a certain point will migrate towards WAC specification. The other one I want to mention is Webinos, that is an European project in which probably we are going to open this one. Um, and this is founded by the European community, around 10 million euro, and there are many, many partners from the different industry, interestingly from automotive, mobile, PC world, and connected TV world. And of course, QT could be one technology that could be proposed in this, in this one. And as we already said, there is a project uh, led by Nokia and the QT team to do a widget runtime open source, so it's already available, and we are looking to synergy between our internal project and this, and this project. Okay, good. So I concluded the presentation. So up to question. Any questions? Yeah, like it. <laughs> so I would be interested in how happy are you about the performance of your widgets on the Symbian phones, or especially on the mobile devices? I mean, as those. HTML documents still need to be DOM passed, and this JavaScript engine still uses much of memories and such. Uh, yeah, so it depends, um, depends, and this is the usual great answer, it depends. <laughs> uh, depends on the kind of the application. So there are some applications that are very simple. You try to keep simple, uh, and these are basically derivative of, uh, uh, let, me, let me say, legacy mobile pages. So you have a service on a page, you transform a bit using the Ajax model in a widget, and you, you put on the phone, and usually on the smartphone, no problem. A smartphone we, means 800 meg on geek, something like this, no problem at all. When you start to use libraries, I mean jQuery, jQuery Mobile, jQtouch, all this kind of library, of course you have to, to go around one gigahertz uh, phones. So it depends a lot. Uh, but we have to say that for the majority of the application, sorry for that, uh, for the majority of application, no problem at all. Um, for what we are looking in next is that is more interesting. So we're going to have 3D on, on web browsers. We're going to have embedded codec. So we think that, you know, if not now, in the future, this kind of approach will get the majority of developers and the, and the possibility. So if you if we go on the pavilion, on the demo pavilion, you, you will see a lot of hardware acceleration of Q, Qt WebKit. So let me say, not now, but in future, the performance 
I'm not saying that it will be the same because, of course, web technology are running, but also native technology, are, cute technology are running, and native technology are running as well. But you, you mean, I mean, for the majority, I would say 80% of the services, no problem. If we talk about gaming, still some problem. We have still some problem, but I saw already some 3D demo on, on WebKit that are really missing. So if we are right to have 3D, probably we are on on a good route. Uh, how we do instead for this project? When we have something in which the performance are not great, we develop in Qt and we expose to the WebKit. This is the, the way to do at the moment. And we think it's a, it's a great thing also because, as I said, we, you can have two different separated teams. One focusing on the service, they just handle web technology and the other focusing on performance optimization on different platforms. So, so this is at least for, for managing a developer team really important.